This is part two of AP Biology Cellular Respiration podcast. Glycolysis is the splitting of sugar. It is the universal energy harvesting process of life. One glucose is broken into two pyruvic acids. Two ATPs are revealed and two NADHs in addition to two hydrogen ions. Steps one through five are pre preparatory and consume energy. ATP is used to split glucose. But in steps six through eight, energy is yielded. Four ATPs are made, and we consider this the energy payoff section. All of these reactions occur in duplicate because at the end of steps one through five, you had two molecules. The net gain of two ATPs from glycolysis is only 5% of the energy that a cell can harvest from a glucose molecule. The two NADHs from steps five through eight are 16% of the energy from glucose, but it is not available for use in the absence of oxygen. The next two stages of cellular respiration release a lot more energy. We have, as a net gain from glycolysis, two ATPs and two NADHs that are carrying the energy from glucose. But there are other products. There are two pyruvic acids and two water. Pyruvic acid diffuses from the cytoplasm into the mitochondria after glycolysis. Pyruvic acid undergoes major chemical grooming before it enters the Krebs cycle. Pyruvic acid is oxidized while a molecule of NAD plus is reduced to NADH. A carbon atom is removed and released in CO2. A compound called coenzyme A, derived from a B vitamin, joins with the two carbon fragment remaining from pyruvic acid to form a molecule of acetyl coenzyme A. These grooming steps are a chemical haircut and conditioning of pyruvic acid. It sets up the second stage of cellular respiration. Acetyl coenzyme A is a high energy fuel molecule for the Krebs cycle. Two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A enter the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle was named for German British researcher Hans Krebs. He figured out this cyclical phase of cellular respiration in the 1930s. Only the two carbon acetyl part of acetyl coenzyme A participates in the Krebs cycle. Coenzyme A helps the acetyl fragment enter the cycle, then splits off and is recycled. The cycle completely disassembles acetyl coenzyme A, stripping away its electrons and casting off two carbon atoms as CO2 for every acetyl fragment that enters the Krebs cycle. Compared to glycolysis, the Krebs cycle has big energy dividends. Each turn of the cycle makes one ATP by substrate level phosphorylation. It also produces three NADHs and one FADH2. These, again, are energy-rich hydrogen carriers. Since two acetyl coenzyme A's from two pyruvic acids go through the cycle, one glucose yields two ATPs, six NADHs, and two FADHs from the Krebs cycle. This is a much higher energy yield than glycolysis. The final stage of cellular respiration is the electron transport chain and the synthesis of ATP by chemiosmosis. This is a clear example of structure fitting function. The spatial arrangement of membrane proteins makes it possible for the mitochondria to use chemical energy to create a hydrogen ion gradient and use the energy stored in the gradient to make ATP. This picture expands on our earlier discussion. The electron transport chain is built into the inner membrane of the mitochondria the folds or cristae enlarge the surface area of the mitochondria, providing lots of space for electron transport chains and ATP synthase molecules. So one mitochondria can produce many ATPs at once. The electron transport chain and chemiosmosis produce about 34 ATPs. So now we have one glucose that produces two ATPs by glycolysis two ATPs from the Krebs cycle, 
and 34 ATPs in chemiosmosis. This is a total of 38 ATPs. This is an approximate number because under different circumstances, more or less may be made. Some poisons work by interfering with some of the processes we just talked about. If you look at the electron transport chain in ATP synthase, a poison called rhodonine binds with one of the electron carriers in the first protein complex, preventing electrons from moving to the next electron carrier. It's used to kill insects and fish. It blocks the electron transport chain and prevents ATP synthase, literally starving the cells of energy. Cyanide and CO, carbon monoxide, binds with the electron carriers in the third protein complex. Here, they block the passage of electrons to oxygen. It's like turning off the faucet. The electrons cease flowing through the pipe, so no hydrogen ion gradient is created and no ATP is produced. Oligomycin is an antibiotic that blocks the passage of hydrogen ions through the ATP synthase channel. It's used on the skin to kill fungal infections. It kills them by preventing the use of potential energy of the hydrogen ion gradient to make ATP. The drug doesn't get absorbed into the skin. Another type of poison is called uncouplers. It makes the mitochondria membrane leak hydrogen ions. The electron transport chain continues, but the hydrogen ion gradient is ruined, so ATP cannot be made. DNP is dinitrophenol. It's deadly to humans. It produces a big increase in metabolic rate. It causes excess heat to be produced, excess sweating, collapse, and death. For a short time in the 1940s, doctors prescribed it in low doses for weight loss, but when people started dying, they stopped using it. It caused weight loss by making the body cells break down all fuel molecules, including fat, because when DNP is present, all steps of cellular respiration continue except chemiosmosis, consuming fuel molecules even though most of the energy is lost as heat. Fermentation is an anaerobic alternative to aerobic respiration. Yeast is a single-celled organism in the fungi kingdom that normally uses aerobic respiration. They can also survive without oxygen on the two molecules of ATP produced in glycolysis. This is inefficient, but if there is enough glucose, they can survive. There is one catch in only using glycolysis to produce ATP. A cell needs a way to replenish its supply of NAD+, as it is reduced or returned to NADH. To do this, yeast and certain bacteria take the pyruvic acid produced in glycolysis and break it into CO2 and ethanol, which is ethyl alcohol. The CO2 are bubbles in beer and sparkling wine and the little holes that form in bread. This is called alcoholic fermentation and it is catalyzed by specific microbial enzymes. The glucose is broken down into two pyruvates. The two ATPs are made and two NADHs are made. The two pyruvates are broken down into ethanol, which releases CO2, creates alcohol, but regenerates NAD+. Fast muscle fibers, which we talked about earlier, use a different type of fermentation called lactic acid fermentation. In this case, the two pyruvates at the end of glycolysis are broken down to create to create two lactate or two lactic acid molecules. This also regenerates NAD+. This occurs in the muscles of animals when they are overexerted. The lactic acid produced in the muscle fibers is carried in the blood to the liver where it is converted back to pyruvic acid. Lactic acid fermentation by bacteria is used in the dairy industry and to make cheese and yogurt. Unlike muscle cells and yeast, many bacteria that live in stagnant ponds and deep soil are strict anaerobes. They require anaerobic conditions and are poisoned by, oxy uh, by oxygen. <clears throat> Facilitative anaerobes can make ATP by either fermentation or by chemiosmosis, depending on whether oxygen is available, like the yeast that we talked about. If oxygen is available, the organism will always go to aerobic. It is more efficient. So to make wine and beer, yeast must be grown anaerobically to produce alcohol, so large vats are used. On those vats, there are one-way gas valves that vent off excess CO2 but keep air out. We've spoken of glucose as a fuel for cellular respiration. 
but free glucose is rare in our diet. We obtain most of our calories from fats, protein, sucrose, and starch. You consume all of these when you eat a bag of peanuts. So this chart illustrates how the cell uses three main types of food molecules to make ATP. A cell can use a wide variety of polysaccharides and sugar for glycolysis. Enzymes in our digestive tract break starches into glucose. Proteins can be used for fuel, but first they must be digested into amino acids. Most amino acids are used by cells to build proteins, but leftovers may be converted to other organic molecules by enzymes. By enzymes. Amino groups can be used to make other compounds or disposed of in urine. The other parts of amino acid molecules are converted to pyruvic acid, acetyl coenzyme A, or other organic acids in the Krebs cycle. Their energy is then harvested through the cellular respiration. Fats are excellent fuel for cells. They contain a lot of hydrogen atoms, which are energy for, which provide electrons for energy. The cell hydrolyzes fat into glycerol and fatty acids. Glycerol can be turned into G3P and fatty acids into acetyl coenzyme A. G3P is the intermediate molecule in glycolysis and acetyl coenzyme A enters the Krebs cycle. One gram of fat has twice as much energy as one gram of starch. To get rid of fat, you need to expand the same amount of energy stored in it, which require, you need to expend the same amount of energy stored in it, which requires a lot of work. Not all food, food molecules are used to make ATP. Food also provides raw materials for cells to use for repair and growth.